At some point when you're animating, you're going to want to know how to animate vertices. For this video, we've got this shape here, and if we go into edit vertices mode, you can see all the different vertices that we have that we can move around, reposition, um, we can even uh, rotate the handles here to create different curves. Now we can do this in design mode, but we can also do it in animate mode. When we select a vertex, you'll notice that over in the inspector will be shown all the animatable properties. Now you can tell that it's animatable by this little diamond here. In this case, we have the X, Y, and corner properties. So we can move it on the X, we can move it on the Y, or we can round that corner out. Now this vertex here is a little different. Because it has handles, we have a few other properties that we can animate. We have the rotation of our handles, and we also have the length of our handles. We still retain control over the X and Y, just like any other vertex. Now that we know all this, let's do a quick little animation. So let's start with the top vertex, and we can go ahead and key the Y position. You'll notice that when we do that, we have a key appear on the timeline, and if we expand our object, you can see that we've um, keyed the vertex of that path. Now let's go halfway down the animation and create another key. Let's maybe move this vertex down and create this little concave shape here. Now, if we pan back and forth, you can see that the uh, positions there are tweening to create this motion. If we want to create a loop, what we need to do is select our first key and paste it at the end of the timeline. So to do that, we just select the key and then hit Control C or Command C, go to the end of the timeline and then Command V or Control V. Now, if we play the animation back, you'll see that we've created a perfect loop. Now, let's add some rotation keys here. So we're gonna select this vertex and use this rotation parameter. And the first thing that we're gonna do is just go ahead and key the initial rotation. So we can use the diamond here. And as soon as we hit that, you'll notice that the rotation appeared down in the timeline. Now we can go to the end of the timeline and go ahead and key that position as well. So now the rotation is gonna start and end at the same spot. So we don't have to copy and paste that key. Now let's key a different rotation here in the middle of the timeline. And when we play the animation, you can see that the change is applied and we have this sort of wave looking animation. Now by default, we have linear interpolation set on everything, but let's go ahead and change that to cubic and see how this changes the movement. Now one really useful tool that we have is this key all vertices option. Now what this is gonna do is key all of the properties for all of our different vertices. You can see we have a lot more uh, keys here on the timeline than we had before, and we can expand these keys to see all of the different properties that have been set. Now, one thing to be aware of is that by doing this, you are creating quite a few keys. While useful, this can add some weight to your file that you might not be expecting. So it can be useful to use this at the start of an animation. And then if it's convenient enough, go back and just make a pass and delete all of the useless keys that you don't need. Now that I've got all these vertices keyed though, I can go anywhere else on the timeline, add an additional key, and then you'll see that when we play it back, we're already having some motion.